Do you think that it's possible that what whether it was an advanced civilization that was like an early version of us or that was more alien like than it was us whatever it was mm -hmm. do you think it's possible that they had a more senses than we had or had yeah. like an ability to tap into other dimensions or had more of a perception of what is beyond what we can perceive as reality i believe that 100 percent, and i'll tell you why i went and did a walkabout in the in the uh, australian outback with aboriginal elders and their verbal handed down story for thousands of years is that they were seated on this planet. I then go and I visit with the Hopi and the Lakota tribe of the Americas. Their verbal handed down history is that they were seated on this planet by the Star Brothers. I'm like, wait a minute. Two different parts of the world, total opposite sides of the planet. And I'm getting the same exact story. In the outback, there's glyphs that are Pleiadian. Nobody has been able to decipher these hieroglyphs to this very day. Nobody, any university, anywhere can decipher these hieroglyphs. The aboriginals say they're Pleiadian. So what's interesting is the aboriginals, and the same thing with the indigenous um, you know, Americans, they have these abilities still within their tribes even today. And I can only imagine how strong they were back then where they could navigate through the magnetic field. They can feel and sense nature. They can communicate uh, psychopathically with each other. They can, you know... Uh, in some cases, they talk about even being able to move things with their mind. So imagine the true power that we really had back, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. No technology, only being able to be one with nature and tapping into all the other DNA that's called junk now that really isn't junk. A new study just came out discovering, they said, wait a minute. Now, I've been talking about this for about 10 years. All my workshops and classes I've been teaching, I keep telling people we don't have any junk DNA. Two years ago, they come out with this study that says, wait a minute, this DNA is not junk. It's really has, it really has a lot of functions in it. Now they're tapping in, trying to figure out what all these functions are. But see, we're so technocratic now in the technocratic age. We've been disconnected from that. But Who it's did there. that study? I forget the name, but we could probably look it up. You okay. could probably Google it and yeah, find that study. Try to find the junk DNA study, Steve. Junk DNA study, yeah. The junk DNA is not junk anymore. And uh, it's pretty incredible because that means that we have a lot of information stored in our body. Mm -hmm. And they also find that, see, there you go right there. Scientists have discovered that junk DNA performs a vital function in ensuring that chromosome bundles correctly, that chromosomes bundle correctly inside the cell's nucleus. This function is necessarily for cell survival and appears to be conserved across many species. Da, 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 da. So they're finding more and more, and the, digger, the deeper they dig, the more they're going to find about this junk DNA. What does that say, Steve? Researchers have also found in some sequences that junk, wow, easy for you to say, in some sequences <laughs> in junk DNA act as genetic switches. Yes. <clears throat> what does that mean? Which determine w w uh, where and when genes get expressed. So it yeah. sounds like uh, triggers, basically. Triggers. So it triggers mm. that you will then, that these genes will then uh, get developed or be used. Right. So if you want to turn on somebody to be, uh, uh, you know, like it says, schizophrenic, there's yeah. a gene for schizophrenia. It could be turned off or on. Right. The worship right. gene, which they don't want to put on the Google, they could turn that off and on. It can be, uh, maybe that's why I'm not religious. My switch, I turn mine is off, you know. Um, and all these various things in the body, switching on and off different genes. If you got a gene for. Find the worship gene. Let's just ask Google. If you have a gene for mu multiple sclerosis. Right. But what if you right. turn that off? Yes, yes. Some of them are dormant. Yeah. Right. So if they can master, this is another key to, quote unquote, a version of immortality. Mm -hmm. Being able to master switching genes off and switching genes on, now all of a sudden, you're not coming, we're not coming down with these crazy illnesses and diseases because those genes will never be activated. Because we've once we learn how to master accessing our junk, quote unquote, junk right. DNA, right. we will be able to control the gene expressions. And once we can control them, then sky's the limit. Forget the universe is the limit. Wow. According to the God gene hypothesis, spirituality has a genetic component. The VMAT2 gene is one component of this, contributing to sensations associated with mystical experiences. There you go. There you go. Have you heard of Rosicrucianism? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That is fascinating. Yeah, yeah I know. It's so, pretty crazy stuff. <clears throat> there's people apparently that are able to 
some people do it through kundalini yoga some mm -hmm. people just do it through meditation some people yeah. do it through whatever they have rituals that they can practice to where they try to tap in to a whole nother realm mm -hmm. and some people attribute it to creativity some people claim that they think of problems before they go to sleep and mm -hmm. then they'll go to sleep they'll wake up and meditate and they'll have the answer that'll yeah. come through the muse or something like that and they're mm -hmm. able to tap into this yeah. other layer of consciousness yeah. and it's it's all very parallel to this idea or this religion called Rosicrucianism, mm -hmm. which I just learned about recently, which yeah. is fascinating. It is. Rosicrucianism has basically taken taken their uh, their concepts and ideas from ancient religions and ancient texts right. and ancient mystery <laughs> teachings. In the ancient mystery schools, they literally taught this, understanding that there is a quote unquote. Uh, book of Life, if you want to call it that. Now, what is this Book of Life that Thoth talks about the Emerald Tablets? That's the oldest time it's referenced, 38,000 years ago in the Emerald Tablets. The Book of Life is this field, this energetic field that stores all information. So right now, both of us are sitting here, we're thinking, right? Our brains never turn off, they're thinking. Mm -hmm. If we can connect an EEG to our heads, we connect to a computer, we'd see our thoughts on the screen. Why? Because our thoughts are leaving our skull in the form of light waves, light waves that we can't see because we can only see 1% of the light spectrum, but n nonetheless, they are light waves. So we are emitting light waves, but what's on the wave of light? Every thought that leaves, it's actually piggybacked with data. The data of your conscious thought is being piggybacked on top of the light wave as it leaves your skull. Just like on the cell phone, a microwave is the light wave. And it's coming to my phone right now. My phone is sending out on the microwave Data, it's piggybacking right. up to the tower. Same exact concept, the way our brains work. So we're sending and receiving information all the time by piggybacking our light waves. Now, when they go out into space time, they never go, they're here, they're, they're on the energetic grid. They're permanently here. There's no way to get rid of them. Now, what if your <clears throat> mind quantum entangles with information in the field from somebody else's thoughts? If you have the capability to quantum entangle with it because you get on the same frequency and you can actually discern the information coming in, mm. you can get knowledge. What we discovered in, in science and in neuroscience is that the brain doesn't create consciousness. It downloads consciousness. Right. And that's what a lot of these Rosicrucians talk about getting these ideas from our downloads. Yes. They talk about getting downloads. Correct. Downloading is real. When I took that course at MIT in Applied Neuroscience, Dr. Tara Swart was the professor. That's exactly what we were taught in the class. <laughs> really? Facts. And I have her own podcast that I did with her talking about this. We did a pod, We did a whole wor a workshop together, a private class together called Spirituality Backed by Neuroscience. I'll send you a link to it. And this is taught about at MIT? At MIT. Spirituality taught by neuroscience? Spirituality backed by backed, neuroscience. Backed by neuroscience. Yeah, exactly. Because the science is the background explaining what's happening on the spiritual side what they've discovered is that the two go together they're not to be separated that we understanding now that in the quantum field mm. the quantum field and the mathematics is literally explaining spirituality and spirituality is a result of what's happening in the quantum field when you separate it you're lost when you put them together you get the answers mm, that's fascinating yeah. there i remember there was a study on um they had like some monkeys that were on an island somewhere near Australia mm -hmm. and they figured something out. Like they figured out a, a yeah. way to use a certain tool yeah. or, or they figured it was a, maybe it was a new they, food. They, they were, were going to wash their food a certain way. Yeah. Okay. You know about it. Yeah. And then, and then simultaneously across the world, another group of monkeys figured out the same thing at the same yes. time. Yes. This is because that information went into the field and those monkeys are on that particular frequency because their thought patterns are the same. Just like when there's an inv uh, an invention in one part of the world, somebody else has the same invention in another part of the world almost at the same time because the information's out there and somebody else grabs it and brings it in. Right. But always sending and receiving information. They found out in a laboratory, George Church, Professor George Church, um, he did an experiment with, with DNA. He did an experiment with DNA. He said, mm -hmm. okay, let's see if DNA can store information, all right? So he was able to take one of his e-books and he actually w was able to convert the digital zeros and ones into A's, C's, T's, and G's and download it onto DNA in a volume. 
And he said, man, it worked. I got my book onto the DNA. Let's see if I can replicate it. He replicated his book 80 billion times on one gram of DNA. One drop. 80 billion times. 80 billion times. And then what did he do? He said, okay, let's see if we can get it back. So then he converted the ACs, Ts, and Gs back into zeros and ones and uploaded it back to the server. So he knew now that DNA can send and receive information in a volume. And so they said, wait a minute, this is incredible. So now they found out that one human body can store over 13.5 billion years of data just in your DNA. The secrets to unmasking this entire universe is in each one of our bodies right now. We just have to tap into it. All the data is in there. And so because they've done this, they now Microsoft has made the first DNA hard drive. So that you have a mm, hard drive to use, yeah, components. Uh, you have the biological component and the, and, the, and the hardware component combined together. So things like teleportation is going to be possible now, okay? Because what's stopping us from doing teleportation of, uh, of animate objects like a human being or animal or, or this cup? We can only teleport molecules at this point. We teleported molecules from Earth to space and back, by the way. Molecules. When did we do that? That was a couple of years ago. Really? Oh, yeah. We can teleport all, all to the ISS and back now. But it's only, you know, small Teleporting particles. molecules. Yeah. But now, Steve, with this kind of database, with storage yep. capability, we'll be able to remember every location of every atom in your body, all the spin rates and everything else, all the frequencies, and we can teleport you somewhere with that kind of storage space on one. A hard drive the size of this cell phone can do it with that kind of technology. Think about that. So by getting into this type of a... Uh, a, a bio component, technological component, hard drive using DNA as the storage medium, sky's the limit on what we can achieve. Mm -hmm.